maybe you want to try out this whole gravel thing or just want to ride away from road traffic, what are the best gravel bikes for beginners in 2023? I'm going to define a beginner gravel bike that is a little bit more budget friendly. Uh, it's 2023, they cost some money, none of them are free, but in the spectrum of what bikes can cost, these are fairly affordable. Also, I'm going to assume that maybe you don't know which discipline of gravel you want to get into, whether it's doing events or using it as a all-purpose road bike or going bike camping. So these bikes are going to be biased towards that all-rounder bike uh, that offers a lot of versatility. The first one is a crowd pleaser and it is the Kona Rove. The Kona Rove is an awesome all-rounder platform and it's offered in a pretty wide price range from as little as $800 all the way up to $2,600. Uh, the main differences being material and component specs. <laughs> My pick from the Spectrum is the Rove Rove, which is kind of right smack dab in the middle at about $1,600. This model comes with some nice supple tires at 650B by 47. Uh, apparently it's available as a two by as well as a one by. I would personally go for the one by because it has a little bit lower gearing than the two by variant. Geometry wise, the chain state is 435 so it's not tucked and squirrely like a road bike it's definitely in that all-rounder maybe slightly longer all-rounder category and the trail figure is a pretty neutral handling 65 so not super quick in the front and not all floopy floppy it also has all the mounting points you could ask for in terms of racks and fenders. So really hard to go wrong with the Kona Rove. One more bike from Kona that I've reviewed on the channel is the Libre. These cost a little bit more. Uh, back when I reviewed them, they were sub 2000, but inflation. Yeah, now they range from $2,000 to $4,000. My pick in the range is the $2,000 one. Uh, it ships with 700 by 45 millimeter tires. In terms of geometry, the chain state is 440, so longer than your all-rounder, definitely leaning towards a more stable bike. And the trail is 71, so creeping up there. What this translates to is a bike that is super stable, super confident on rough terrain. It's going to basically steer itself. Another feature I like about this specific Libre is that it's got pretty high stack. So if you're looking for a bike uh, where you want to sit a little bit more upright and don't want to run a gang of spacers, then the Kona Libre is definitely one to check out. So it's nearly impossible to talk about this kind of class of bike without talking surly. My next pick, which is available both in drop as well as flat bar, is the Surly Preamble. It's their latest release, their most budget-friendly release uh, as of now, and it ranges from $900 for the flat bar to $1,200 for the curly bar variant. In terms of tire size, it ships with 35 millimeter tires uh, with clearances for 650B by 41 or 700 by 40. It is disc brakes, but quick release. Uh, some people will just freak out about that. I personally don't have a problem. That's actually what this Hachita is behind me. While through axle is nice, it does help you align the disc brake within the calipers a little bit easier. I don't think it should necessarily be a deal breaker. This chain stay length on the preamble is a pretty short 420 and the trail is 64. So for this price point, it's gonna be a pretty surprisingly nimble bike, much shorter than the Kona offerings. So if you want something quick and jumpy, uh, you know, the preamble is a neat bike to check out. Also, it's got all the rack mounts, so super functional. Before there were gravel bikes, there was the cross check. The cross check was kind of the or gravel bike uh, that people modified to work for gravel events. Interestingly, in 2023, it's no longer offered with a drop bar, uh, so you can only get a flat bar variant of it. A little bit of a bummer, but you can have a complete bike for $1,000. The tire clearances are 700 by 42, maybe 47 if you really squeeze it in there. And yes, it is a rim brake bike. I think the cross check is definitely one of those bikes that's not super baller, but you will get the nod from fellow bike nerds. I think nearly everybody has owned, ridden, touched, knows a friend that has a cross check. So it's a fun way of getting some street cred without spending a ton of money. The, the geometry on the cross check is fairly similar to the preamble. Uh, the rear chain city length is 425 and the trail is 67. So well within that general road bike handling feel. Another pretty awesome beginner gravel bike that I think a lot of people sleep on is the Jameis Renegade. The price ranges from a thousand all the way up to $4,000 depending on material and component spec. 
You can get it in aluminum, in steel, and in carbon. What's pretty unique about the JMS Renegade is that they change the fork offset uh, per the given size of the bike. This is the only bike on this list that does this. Most manufacturers will have one fork made with one fork offset. And to make it fit for different size bikes, they'll just adjust the head tube angle. In essence, you can have a bike model and the smallest bike and the largest bike are gonna ride completely different. But with the James Renegade, they should, at least in theory, ride very similar. My, my pick for the best value would be the S4 build. Uh, so it's steel, it costs $1,400. You get some Reynolds brand name tubing, uh, a carbon fork, that customized offset for the size. Sora components are not super baller, but very functional. And it ships with 700 by 37 millimeter tires. The chain state is 427 and the trail is 65. Uh, again, splitting the hairs of that road handling slash all-rounder handling feel. Can't really go wrong with the Renegade. I feel like you get a pretty unique bike and pretty good bang for the buck. Another brand that a lot of people sleep on, but I think has some interesting options is Marin. I reviewed the Marin Nicasio a couple years ago. The prices have crept up, but I still think for the money you get a fun Bike. The price ranges from $900 all the way up to $1,700. My pick would be the Nicasio Plus at $1,100. For the money, you get MicroShift Advent, the 9-speed version, 11 to 46 in the rear, 42 in the front. Geared a little high for the super steep, but okay for flattish rolling territory. It ships with 650B by 47, uh, and you can also run 700 by 37s in there. The chain stay length is 420 and the trail is 61. The rear is on the shorter end and the trail is slightly lower than the bikes we've been looking at. So what this adds up to is a pretty fun and responsive bike. If you're looking for a bike that's a little bit on the jumpier side, one that accelerates with lots of quick short bursts and handles really nimbly, but maybe gives up some stability on the rough stuff, then definitely check out the Nicasio Plus. The next bike is also from Marin. It is the aluminum DSX series of bikes. Uh, the price ranges from $900 to $1,600. I think these are pretty interesting bikes because they're kind of like the gravel bike for mountain bikers. Aside from having just flat bars, it has a kind of mountain bikey uh, geometry. It ships with 700 by 45 millimeter tires. The chain stay in the rear is 425, so kind of on the tucked end. What's interesting is that the trail is fairly high at 81. It's not like downhill mountain bike uh, high, but it's definitely intentionally higher than the bikes that we've been looking at so far. What this means is that the bike should feel like a fairly responsive climber when you're standing on the pedals. It might wander a bit on slow speed climbs, but once you point it downhill, that high trail will give you that added stability. Super interesting bike, one I've been really curious about over the last couple of years. Hopefully I'll get a chance to test one out this year. The next bike is the Salsa Journeyer, which I feel like could almost be its own bike brand because there are so many variants of the Journeyer. The prices range from $1,000 all the way up to $2,800. The biggest difference is going to be the components as well as which fork it gets. My pick amongst the dozens of variants would be the Sora 650B version at $1,500. It ships with 650B by 47 millimeter tires, but it has room to fit up to 700 by 50. This particular variant also comes with the wax wing uh, carbon fork to shave a little bit of weight, as well as a 4630 crank set. The chain stay on the bike is 440, so on the longer end, and the trail is 75, so a little bit on the higher end. What this equates to is a bike that's gonna help you feel planted, stable, secure. It's probably not gonna be the quickest feeling bike, but if you're a true beginner and are just new to the whole curly bar world, then the handling should be pretty predictable and lean on the stable side. Okay, last two. Uh, these are available as frame only, but they make awesome platforms for gravel bikes. A big bonus with these is that if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get 20% off the frame and components. If you buy these bikes, we don't get a kickback, but they want to support the channel by offering some fun incentives to Patreon supporters. The first one is the Velo Orange uh, Polyvalent. I actually ended up buying the one I tested. It's changed since then. It's now threadless. It doesn't have the quill stem, 
but it's an awesome all-rounder bike that's available both as a diamond and step-through frame. Price on it without the Patreon discount is $925. Chainstay is $435 and the Trail is $47, which is pretty interesting. It's probably the lowest trail bike uh, from this entire list. And, and without getting too confusing, what that means is that the front end handling is such that when you put a load on the front, it's going to handle normal. It's going to be a little bit squirrely when there's nothing there, but once you put like three to five pounds, it'll feel like a normal bike. So if you want to try out those low trail vibes without breaking the bank, then the polyvalent is a great option. Next one is the Soma Wolverine, which makes an awesome all-rounder. Price with fork is about $1,000. That's before the Patreon discount. You can run 650B with it. I did that on my review bike, and you can also run up to 700 by 45. It's a little confusing, but it comes in two variants. There's the Type A, which is in this cool pumpkin orange that has kind of retro Bridgestone X01 vibes. And this is the more modern one, if you will. Uh, it takes through axles. So if you want to run a carbon fork, uh, this is the model to get. And it's also built around flat mountain brakes. The Type B one is for kind of retro bike nerds. It also comes in this cool Toyota-esque uh, Land Rover uh, colorway. It's got the bosses for down tube shifters. Uh, another interesting thing about the Type B is that it has a split stay for belt drives. So if you're gonna build up a roll off, uh, this is the one to get. And you can run it both with quick release and through axle depending on which rear plates you get as well as which accompanying fork. Chain stay on these bikes, depending on how you set up the dropouts, is around 427. So in that all rounder, maybe slightly sportier handling kind of bike. If you found this video helpful in deciphering the world of uh, these beginner entry level gravel bikes, definitely consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon, get some sweet discounts, or stop by the merch store, pick up a couple stickers, and as always, keep the supple side down.